Welcome back to another console collector video. Hey everybody, console collector here. Today, it's a history lesson. We're going to take a look at a series of videos that feature video game consoles and handhelds throughout the years. These videos won't show every console in history, but they will have a lot of key consoles as well as a lot of consoles you may or may not have heard of. We're going to take a look at the console itself, learn a little bit about the history of the console, some information about it, as well as the controller, game format, important accessories, and even the original packaging for most of the consoles. So sit back, relax, and get ready to take a trip through the history of video game consoles. All right, let's kick off this video with the oldest console in my collection, the Coleco Telstar Pong console from 1976. The Telstar is a series of video game consoles produced by Coleco from 1976 to 1978, starting with the Telstar Pong console from 1976, which is seen here. The console featured a single built-in game, Pong. The controllers were also built into the system and they were simple dial style controllers. The console itself here has some nice fake wood green finish on there. These are the controllers here. Then I had a couple of different options here. You can do on and off power. You have tennis, which is Pong, hockey, or handball, reset button, beginner, intermediate, and pro difficulty. So that's the Coleco Hellstar on console. All right, up next, we take a look at the Atari 2600 Woody from 1977. When you say old Atari, most people are talking about the 2600. The original retail price was $199 US. Adjusted for inflation in today's market, that's a whopping $858 in 1977. The Atari 2600 originally sold as the Atari Video Computer System or Atari VCS until November 1982 is a home video game console from Atari released in September 1977. It is credited with popularizing the use of microprocessor based hardware in games contained on a ROM cartridge. It had later revisions such as the Atari 2600 Junior which was a slimmed down version of the console which you can see right here. It also had some variations such as the infamous Vader console it was a black console with a black face instead of the wood grain, which you can see here. The name Vader was inspired by Darth Vader, who was popular at the time from the brand new Star Wars films. The 2600 used cartridge based games, such as this here, and they would plug in to the top like so. You would flick your power on, you could change between color, black and white, game select, game reset. It used a remo removable single joystick controller with a single action button. Use the single joystick and the single button and it would plug in to the console. The 2600 was discontinued in January 1992 after a long historic run. The 2600 was home to many classic games like Space Invaders, Galaga, Asteroids, Pac-Man, and Adventure that was recently seen in the hit movie Ready Player One. Even the infamous E.T., which is known as one of the worst video games of all time. 
Pac-Man. Even Mario Bros. made it through 2600. And Adventure. So that's the Atari 2600 from 1977. All right, up next we have the Sears Telegames video arcade system. It was released in 1977. It originally retailed for 199 US dollars. Adjusted for inflation, that's $858. Now essentially the Sears Telegames console is an Atari 2600. It's just a rebranded 2600, similar to how the Intellivision is, was rebranded to the Radio Shack Candy Vision. It's the identical console, plays the same cartridge, the same controller, just a rebranding. So here you can see, got the, the six switches here, and then there it says Telegames. In the front, it's got a different wood grain design, and then there you can see it says Video Arcade. So it plays 2600 games, like this Donkey Kong, but the thing about this rebranding of the Sears Telegames is they actually kind of made their own cartridges. It's still a 2600 cartridge that works on a 2600 or the Telegames, but it was different label, so it says Telegames there. So you can see, same carts, it's a little bit different stickers. You pop that in. The thing about the Sears Telegames is it retailed for the same price as the 2600, so really it just came down to did you shop at Sears or somewhere else that carried the 2600. Alright, so again, that's the Sears Telegames Video Arcade System from 1977. All right, let's take a look at the Magnavox Odyssey 2 from 1978. The original retail price of the console was $179 US, adjusted for inflation, that's $719. The video game consoles of this era were not cheap. Imagine asking your parents for a $700 video game console these days. In the 1970s, Magnavox pioneered the home video game industry by successfully bringing the first home console to market, the Odyssey, which was followed up in 1978 by the all-new Magnavox Odyssey 2, seen here. The Odyssey 2 uses cartridge-based games with a distinct, unique handle. There's the handle. So basically, you would take the game, and you would plug it into the console, like that, hit your power button, and you're ready to play. The system featured two hard-wired joysticks that were built to the console. So here, they have a really springy, odd-feeling joystick. But they bounce back in place. It's kind of mushy. And then there's your action button. The console itself is unique that it has this smooth kind of touchpad style button layout. You've got some numbers here, function buttons, and then your keyboard, including space. Games like Frogger and Speedway also appeared on the console. The final game released for the Magnavox Odyssey 2 was Power Lords. So that's the Magnavox Odyssey 2 from 1978. Alright, on to another big name console from the first generation of gaming, the Intellivision Model 1 with Intellivoice module from 1979. Its original retail price was 299 US dollars. Adjusted for inflation, that's an insane $1,099. The Intellivision is a home video game console released by Mattel Electronics in 1979. The name Intellivision is a combination of Intelligent Television. The development of the console began in 1977, the same year as the introduction of its main competitor, the Atari 2600. 
It had several console, console variations and revisions, such as the Intellivision 2 and the Radio Shack Candy Vision. So this is the console itself here. It's got this kind of brass looking finish. The controllers here are wired in. It's got a little spinny dial deal here with buttons. Two controllers. Power on and off. Wood grain finish here. And you can see Mattel Electronics Intelligent Television. Now this guy here is the IntelliVoice voice synthesis module with a volume control. Essentially, you plug your cartridges in the side here. So you take He-Man here, and you plug it in like so, play your game. Or you take the IntelliVoice module, plug that in to the side, then you would take your special voice synthesis cartridge here, as you see B17 Balmer, and you plug that in. So basically, putting them all in together like that. Quick look at the cartridge here. It's got a nice end label, got a very slim design. So move that guy out of the way. What we have here is one of the variations of the Intellivision. This is the Radio Shack Tandy Vision. As you can see, Radio Shack up here, same controllers, identical. Tandy Vision 1 there, reset and power. Kind of a darker wood green. And then your cartridge port there. So the Intellivision had the adapter module called the IntelliVoice Synthesis Module that utilized a voice synthesizer to generate audible speech. The IntelliVoice was discontinued in 1983 due to poor sales, with only five titles released with support for the device. Despite this, it had been called an important innovation in gaming since the IntelliVoice software used speech as an important gameplay element, which was one of the first home consoles to do so. The console used cartridges for its games. They used wired built-in controllers with a unique button layout and dial button. The console was home to classic games like Tron Deadly Discs and, as you've seen before there, B-17 Balmer. The best seller for the Intellivision was Las Vegas slash Blackjack. And that is the Intellivision. Next up is the huge Atari 5200 from 1982. The original retail price of the 5200 was 269 US dollars. Adjusted for inflation, that's 716 dollars. The Atari 5200 is a video game home console that was introduced in 1982 by Atari. It is a successor to the popular Atari 2600 home console. The 5200 was created to compete with the Intellivision and later on directly competed with the ColecoVision shortly after its release. It's a beast of a system and it's one of the largest video game home consoles of all time. There are two different versions of this system with various controller inputs, a two port and a 4 port, which you can see along the bottom of the console here. It ultimately failed in sales due to the poor quality controller, which was famous for breaking after a few uses. The 5200 used large cartridge based games and featured removable joystick style controllers. The console has some of the best ports of arcade games like Pac-Man and Space Invaders. The best seller for the 5200 was Pac-Man. So these are the game cartridges here, and here's Pac-Man. In comparison, this is a 2600 cartridge, so they are a little bit smaller, 26, the 2600 cards, opposed to the 5200. 
basically you plug the controller, the cartridge in there, and then you'd power it on like so. It's kind of hard to get this in full frame because it's so large, but yeah, this is just an enormous controller. It's insane. It actually had this little flapper up here that opened up and right here and you could store the excess RF cable in it. Just a comparison so you know what the size. This is a PlayStation 4 controller. Like, this thing is massive. The infamous controllers for the 5200 seen here. It's not a bad looking controller. It's got the buttons on the side, start, pause, and reset. Keypad here with overlay. This is the main problem here. See this joystick? It doesn't recenter itself. It's stuck down. Yeah. These are junk. Fortunately, I have one that works, and this is the one. They're very low quality, and yeah, it's a big part of why the 5200 failed, which it's a shame because the games are actually really good on this system. Alright, so that was the Atari 5200 from 1982. Alright, what you saw there is the Vectrex from 1982. Its original retail price was $199 US, adjusted for inflation, that's $530. The Vectrex is a vector-based home video game console that was licensed and distributed first by General Consumer Electronics, GCE, and later on by Milton Bradley after its purchase of GCE. It was released in November 1982 at the retail price of $199 as Milton Bradley took over the international marketing. The price dropped to $150, then reduced it again to $100 shortly before the video game crash of 1983, and it finally retailed after the crash for a measly $49. The Vectrix went off the console market in early 1984. Unlike other non portable video game consoles, which connected to televisions and rendered its graphics, the Vectrex had an integrated vector monitor which displays vector graphics. The Vectrex came with a built-in game, Mindstorm, basically an Asteroids clone. The Vectrex is one of the most unique home video game consoles of all time, and it used cartridge-based games. It had a removable rectangle controller with a mini joystick and four face buttons. Good arcade ports like Pole Position appeared on the Vectrex. So this is the cartridge for the Vectrex here. This is a multi-cart. Essentially, the Vectrex has a slot on the side here. So you plug your game in right there. You drop this little face down here, and this is your controller. Joystick and the four face buttons. This monitor you're looking at here, this is the Vectrex. It's, it's large. basically like a mini two TV but it's a special vector screen and it displays the graphics that you've seen earlier in the video so that's the Vectrex from 1982 
let's talk about the ColecoVision from 1982. Its original retail price was 175 US dollars. Adjusted for inflation, that's $466. The ColecoVision is Coleco Industries' second generation home video game console that was released in August 1982. The ColecoVision offered a closer experience to more powerful arcade game systems compared to its competitors such as the Atari 2600, along with the means to expand the system's basic hardware. ColecoVision had a number of expansion modules, most notable was the expansion module that makes the ColecoVision compatible with the industry rivals Atari 2600 game cards. That's right, you can play your 2600 games on the ColecoVision. Imagine being able to play your copy of Super Smash Bros Ultimate on your PS4 or Xbox One today. That would never happen. The expansion module prompted legal action from Atari. Coleco and Atari settled out of court with Coleco becoming licensed under Atari's parent company. And with that, the clone console of the 2600, the Coleco Gemini, was born. The design of the controllers is similar to that of the Intellivision. The controller is rectangular and consists of numeric keypad and a set of side buttons. The Coleco controller has a short 1.5 inch joystick. The keypad is designed to hold a thin plastic overlay that maps the keys to a particular game. The Coleco Vision used standard cartridges that were similar to the Atari 2600. Some notable games for the Coleco Vision were Zaxton and Mousetrap, which was a Pac Man clone. The Coleco Vision was discontinued in 1985 after a three year, very short run. Shortly after ColecoVision's discontinuation, Coleco withdrew from the video game market. So here is a ColecoVision cartridge. This is Gorf. Pretty standard looking cartridge for the time. It's got Coleco stamped in the back there. Essentially you would take your cartridge, you would pop it in, and you could power on like so. These controllers do unplug from the Coleco. So that was one thing that the Coleco had um, over some of its competitors, like the Intellivision, is you could replace the, the controller, which is awesome. So it's got the joystick here, the number pad, we got a reset button here. Nice little front face there, Coleco Vision. Now this here is the expansion module port. Basically you would slide it open and you could connect an expansion module to the front. Just so happens, this is the ColecoVision expansion module, which allowed you to play 2600 game cartridges on your ColecoVision. Essentially, you would plug this end in here to the ColecoVision like so, and then you would take your 2600 cartridge, because you want to play ET all the time, Away, and you pop it in and just like that you're playing ET on your ColecoVision all right that's it for the ColecoVision from 1982 now on to the Coleco Gemini from 1983 the Coleco Gemini is an Atari 2600 clone manufactured by Coleco in 1983 it played Atari 2600 game cartridges. The Gemini used a unique joypad slash paddle style controller. Basically it had the dial on one side, action button here, and a built in joystick. All in one. It's a removable controller. There's not much to say about the Gemini but it definitely is basically an Atari 2600. Just plug your cartridge into there, power it on, and you're playing 2600 games. You can see it has the ports on the front here. Fairly uncommon console. 
but really it's nothing too special. The thing that I personally do like about it is the controller. So that's the Coleco Gemini from 1983. All right, that's the end of part one. Be sure to check out part two when we kick it off with the Nintendo Entertainment System.